Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm Elizabeth Green, and in this particular video, we are going to be going over what should you be doing with your ad campaigns when your products are going out of stock. So um, let's kick it off. I have three different sections, which you can see on the screen right now. Um, one thing I think is super important to do when you go about implementing any sort of strategy is an analysis on if that strategy is going to work well for your particular account. So a lot of the content I put out that is not related to bulk files or any like very specific tutorials is going to be giving you a framework to analyze your account. Um, and then you can take whatever questionnaire framework, apply it to the account, then that should give you an idea on if a strategy is going to work well or not. So let's get into the three questions. I'm going to go through ex explanations. Then after we go through that, we're going to go through um, the four things you can do instead of pausing the ads completely because there are things you can do in increments and in steps. Um, and then at the very end, we're going to give three tips on how you can make your life a lot easier when the products come back into stock and you need to restart the ads. All right. So the first question you're going to want to ask yourself when you realize that you're going to be running out of stock is how long are you going to be out of stock? Because this is going to determine how aggressively you want to go about pausing your ads. So one thing to take into account is the longer you're out of stock, unfortunately, the longer it's kind of going to take to get momentum back once you um, come back in stock. So if you are out of stock for, say, a month, maybe even like three weeks or longer, then in a lot of ways, your ads, when you come back into stock, you're going to need to treat that like a relaunch. So if you're going to have to be essentially relaunching anyways, then severely restricting your ads is not really going to matter so much in the long run because um, you're going to have to restart anything anyways. And even if you do have everything completely paused, it's not really going to affect you as much as say you're only going to be out of stock for a couple days. Then maybe you want to be a little bit more strategic with what you're pausing because in that case, you should be able just to ramp back up again and you shouldn't have to worry so much about relaunching everything. Um, so that would be something to take into account. Um, and that will also kind of give you an idea on how significantly you need to slow things down. Because if you're going to be out of stock for a significant period of time anyways, then maybe it doesn't, um, one or two days here or there is not really going to make a significant amount of difference. Um, so maybe you want to look at profits a little bit more. But if you are only going to be out, say, for a couple days, then maybe you don't want to severely slow down um, your stocking and uh, your sales velocity. And then the second question that you want to ask yourself is going to be how much of a percentage um, do your ads make up of the total product sales? This is going to be super important. I don't hear people talking about this when it comes to slowing down the ads, but if you have a significant portion of your total sales for the product coming from your ads, then if you completely paused those ads for the product, then you are going to significantly reduce the sales velocity on those particular products versus if you only had like same uh, much smaller 10 to 20 percent you know if you're barely doing anything from the ads anyways then if you simply pause everything it's not going to have as much of a significant difference on the sales velocity of the product so you definitely want to take this into account um how you would go about calculating this is much easier if you have a single product can totally be done if you have individual ASINs. But what you would do is you would go into um, discover how much of the total sales there were on the ads. So you go into um, the ad console, grab the total um, sales numbers for the ads, and then you would go into your business reports. If you have a single product, of course, this can be done at a high level at the account level. If you have um, additional ASINs, you would need to go and you would need to pull the total sales numbers on that particular ASIN. And then you would simply take the ad sales divided by the total sales. And that percentage gives you the percent of the sales that are coming from the ads. So whatever that percentage is, now you know it. Um, and you can determine, again, what those ratios are. And then 
if you have a high ratio in favor of the ad sales, then you know maybe you need to be a little bit more strategic with how you're going to decrease versus if the um, impact on the total sales isn't all going to be all that great. Maybe it doesn't matter as much if you significantly reduce what you're doing with your ads. All right, and then our third question you're going to want to ask yourself is how profitable are you right now? So this is definitely going to be something when you come back into stock, you're probably going to have to spend a lot more on your PPC and your ads to start generating, you know, that sales velocity again. So you do want to take this one into account. If you are super unprofitable with your ads, then you might want to restrict them more and get hyper profitable conscience. Um, but again, you want to take that first question into account because oftentimes if you're not profitable with your ads, you have a significant portion of your total sales coming from your ads. And it's possible in those scenarios, if you like completely restricted what you're doing, these sales might in some ways stop altogether. So you, I think all of this kind of gives you a balanced idea of how, um, hard or maybe less aggressive you should go with pulling back on the ads. Now, if you're going to be running out of stock, honestly, I do think it's important to start reducing what you're doing with the ads. But um, again, take these three questions into account, analyze what's going on with the product, and then we can get into these four things you can do um, instead of completely pausing the ads because again, there are a couple other steps we can go into. All right, so I'm going to give you four things you can do with your ads that come before just pausing everything. Of course, that is the most drastic thing you can take. There are instances where it makes sense to completely pause everything you're doing with the ads. However, um, I think there are ways that you can ease into it before you get that drastic. So the first one is going to be lower bids on all clicks with no sale keywords. Now, this is something you should be doing routinely in your account. You always be severely restrictive with this. However, um, it is something you want to focus on when you have products that are running out of stock. You do want to get hyper profitable. So by going into account, I would pull a larger date range inside of your ad account. We now have the targeting tab, which can give you lifetime, which is great. Um, and you can go through and you can say what has been getting a decent amount of clicks with no sales in my on my product ads. And I want to restrict these. These are things that are not bringing us sales anyway. So this won't necessarily always reduce the sales velocity, although that kind of that can kind of be an effect because there is some sort of um, a halo effect when it comes to the ads. But this should just um, reduce everything and get rid of all the waste in your account. Like I said, we need to be doing this routinely in all of your accounts, but you can get hyper specific with these when it comes to going out of stock. And then the second thing on this list of four is going to be prune waste. Now this goes into, again, this is things that are getting clicks with no sales, but this is high ACOS or things that are a bit high above our ACOS and then have a lower order value. So things that aren't really bringing us many sales anyways. Um, but they are spending money. So again, we're reducing, we're getting rid of anything that is not performing for us that has higher ACoS, especially the things with the higher ACoS and like not that many sales coming from them anyways. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of like our next step digging down into this hierarchy. This hierarchy goes from the least amount of impact on the um, sales coming from the ads and then it goes all the way down to maybe being a little bit more specific with that. And then um, the third thing is going to be you want to limit or stop anything that you're testing on. Now, you should have gotten a, probably a bit of this through like the wasted and anything that is um, getting clicks with no sales. However, oftentimes we have testing that's going on with our account. We might not necessarily have any clicks or any data from it at all. So what you would want to do is just make sure that there's nothing running in the account that just hasn't really gotten impressions and hasn't adequately been tested and you can just preemptively stop this. Now in my three tips I'm going to give you some information that will actually help you with these adjustments to revert them when you come back in stock because you've obviously gone through the work to find the keywords to put in the campaigns to test. So they're probably something that you actually want to test for the product. However, 
in this moment, we're just looking at reducing our ads. So this would be definitely something you would want to do. Oftentimes we have those campaigns with all the test keywords that maybe only have like one or two clicks on them, but we know that we haven't really tested anything. So it's possible that they'll start getting more clicks and we don't know if it'll work or not. So it might be a good idea to just go ahead and pause those. And then the fourth thing that you can do in lieu of um, just simply going in and pausing everything is going to be you can adjust your budget. So this is going to be a really good one. Um, you can, if you have only a single product, you can go into the settings tab and you can set a daily budget for um, your entire account. Do note that if you do this, again, it applies to everything contained within the account. So if you have multiple products, this is not going to be the best way to go about it. And then it also, this daily budget does not include the sponsor brand or the sponsor display. So if you have a significant amount of sponsor display or sponsor brands, that option is probably not going to work for you as well. Or you can just do that total um, account budget and then set individual budgets on the um, the sponsor brand and sponsor display campaigns. Or you can then go in, of course, if you have multiple products, you can go in and you can set different uh, campaign budgets. Just reduce them to um, limit the amount of spend. I would, again, prioritize on the things that are not performing as well, reducing those spend more significantly than the other ones, but that should help you um, kind of pull back on your ads. So all of these steps, again, depending on um, how aggressive you determine within those first three criteria that you want to be with your account, you can then just start um, digging down deeper into these four things you could do. And then again, if you decided that uh, I absolutely need to pause everything, you can go ahead and do that as well. All right, now we have our three tips. So with making significant changes to the account, especially ones that you are going to want to revert at a later date, it helps to do them in a way that can um, signal to you that this is something that needs to be readjusted. Because what often can happen in an account is if we have a campaign that's not working as well, or we have keywords that are not working very well, we'll often go through and pause those. Well, what happens if you go through and you pause or adjust bids significantly on things that you're only reducing simply because you're going out of stock? It's not that they were bad keywords. It's not that they necessarily had a proven poor performance. It's just we're reducing things things at this minute, well, it can be very difficult sometimes to go back through and revert things after like this portion is done um, and it can kind of be a pain. So one thing you can do is you can set, when you're reducing your bids, you can set the bids to something you can recognize. So in lieu of just going through and pausing, one thing I will do oftentimes is set the bid at two cents. This effectively pauses the keyword. I don't know if I've ever seen a click on a bid with two cents. It's possible if you get one, you're not really going to have much ad spend anyways. But what this does to, for me is I can then go into reports or I can look at the targeting tab or if I'm in a campaign at a later date and see a bunch of two cent bids. This is something I know that I've done um, for the purpose of simply pruning things at the time and something that I'm looking to go through and retest in the future. So if you're going through that hierarchy and you find things with a bunch of clicks and no sales, or you find waste in the account that you do actually want to get rid of permanently, then you can just use your optimization processes as you normally would. Maybe pause things. Maybe you have a set bid that you use for certain targets and you can go ahead and set this and then just use that two cent bid method or whatever other bid method you've decided you want to signify to yourself. Um, you can use that to kind of tag anything that you want to, again, retest later. Um, and so the second tip I have here is going to go to the budget. So remember when I said we're reducing budgets or we might pause things, it's kind of the exact same scenario where we might go through and we might pause a campaign that we do want to retest at a later date. And so to tag that for ourselves, you can actually do um, put a dollar budget on that campaign versus pausing it. That way you can, again, signify to yourself, this is something I want to retest. Now, um, depending on how many campaigns you have, like if you had 50 or 100 campaigns, the potential spend on those campaigns would be the number of like campaigns you have because you just take a dollar and you multiply it by say 30 or so. Um, so that will come into play if you're looking to be severely restrictive, but that is a possibility um, 
to go through and test that. All right, and then the last tip I have for you is going to be bulk files. Yes, um, bulk files are a great way to archive what is going on with your particular account. So what you can do before you go through, before you make any drastic changes, what you can do is you can go through and you can download a bulk file. And this is a great way to archive what is currently going on with your account. Save it to your desktop, save it in a folder somewhere, and then go back and reference it. Um, and you can actually use that as an upload just to kind of reset everything after um, you come back in stock and then you want to ramp things up a little bit. Now, there's a couple notes on this. One is going to be if you have multiple products in your account and then you're reducing some of them, but then you're going through and you are making adjustments on the other ones, just your normal optimization sequences, and then you re-upload that old file, it's going to revert everything if you don't... Um, go through and like filter it. So what you would want to do is you want to go through that particular bulk file. You would want to only pull out the things that are related to whatever products that you've gone through and you've reduced, and then you would only upload those particular rows. Don't go and filter it and then re-upload the file. You actually have to copy and paste only what you have and you want to like revert. So that's something. And then the other thing is that sponsor display is not um, included in bulk files and you cannot make changes to ASIN targeting inside of brand campaigns. However, you will be able to see what your bids were previously and what your budgets budgets can be adjusted. You just can't adjust the ASIN targeting. Um, so that would be an option as well. And I think it's a really good way to kind of see what you've done in the past, what everything looked like in the past. It can also help archive your um, previous best performers as well. So I suggest you download at least a decent a range of data, maybe last 30 days or so, and then you can get a good idea of what was working previously. So if you have to go through and kind of do like a relaunch, you have a report to go back and look on. All right. I hope this was super helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. And of course, I'm trying to put content li out like this. Um, more often now. So if you have any suggestions on topics that you would like me to talk about, let me know. Thanks so much.